In Ghana, an outreach team is screening villagers at a cocoa farm. They use a tumbling E eye chart. The universal E represents three fingers, so people who may be illiterate can point in the direction that the E is facing, testing the accuracy of their vision. These teams have been screening local communities within a radius of 100 kilometers of Jobasso in Western Ghana. Their goal is to find people with curable blindness, such as cataracts, that would benefit from eye surgery and potentially regain their sight. Most employment here is physical, like farming, so being visually impaired is a huge disadvantage. With little access to healthcare or social services, and villages difficult to access by road, some say being visually impaired amounts to a death sentence. I'm Dr. Fred Bedra. I'm the medical lead for Grandpa Coco Farmers Union. I'm currently helping the outreach team with ground logistics and the uh, movement within the communities in the Western region. We are just facilitating to get the very hard to reach people. They, they really need help. It's, it's a known fact. The nearest health center is always very far from where they live. And most of their communities have little or no access to health care. There is no means of transportation, only by foot and sometimes by motorbike. So those are real, real, real challenges. I think some of them have not had any group of medical team in their communities ever. In Kumasi, a medical team are loading vehicles with sight-saving technology flown in from around the world, ready to start the long journey to Jabasso, around five hours away. Medical teams have been traveling around the country like this for many years, motivated by the fact that they can transform lives. On arrival in Jobasso, everyone works together to unload the equipment and build their pop-up operating theatre. A simple solution like water is used to hold the surgical technology steady for the ophthalmologists, so they won't move during eye surgery. few last tweaks and then once everything is ready, it's time to get some rest before a long day tomorrow. It's early in the morning and the outreach buses are transporting patients to the theatre ready for surgery. When they arrive, they are screened again using portable slit lamps and a cutting-edge ophthalmic camera, which has been donated to the project. In the right hands, this high-tech kit allows the surgeons to analyse the eye before, during and after surgery. There are a few general health checks too. This instrument allows the size of the eye to be measured and blood pressure is taken. Everything is written down ready for the ophthalmologists. Then the anaesthetic is administered, numbing the eye. This is the last stage before surgery. Every eye has a natural lens, you are born with it, and it's supposed to be transparent for light to pass through. So before you can see, light has to pass through your lens to the back of the eye, where we call the retina, for you to see. So your lens has to be naturally transparent. As you grow older, or if you have any other disease of the eye, it becomes opaque. So light cannot pass through, light cannot get to the back of your eye for you to see very well. So what we do is that we go inside your eye, we take out the diseased lens that is opaque, and then we replace it with an artificial lens that is crystal clear. The surgery itself um, is a simple process, which takes between 10 and 15 minutes. 
this is someone's life in your hands. This is someone's eye in your hands. It's, it's very delicate. It feels good to do, let me put it that way. It feels good to do it. <laughs> it's definitely worth the years of struggle to learn this kind of surgery. The surgery itself is quick, around 10 minutes. It's getting late, but the medical team works on into the night until everyone has been treated. Once the patients have been through surgery, they have to wait 24 hours until their eye patches can be removed. Some people can't see anything at all and won't have seen their family in years. Many here are cocoa farmers, and without their vision, they can't work or earn money. Others need the help of a carer, someone to guide them, assist them with cooking and other daily tasks. The ophthalmologists perform surgery on around 80 patients a day, each with their own struggles and stories. A long night has now passed, and the patients are nervously awaiting the removal of their bandages. It's potentially a life-changing moment. People come in with walking sticks, aided by their relatives, and then the following day you take the patch off, and then you, you see them looking around, they see the world in a different light, and then suddenly they can walk on their own. Imagine a child who guides an older one to wherever he goes. Such a person cannot go to school. So you are perpetuating a cycle of poverty from generation to generation. Once someone's sight is restored, that cycle is broken. And then some people just look straight at you and say, I can see you, I can see you now. Some people just burst out laughing or sometimes even crying and all burst into song. <laughs> You, you, you feel happy that, in your little way, you've been able to help someone. You have been part of a team that has changed someone's life. The thing with eyes is that the impact is immediate and instant, and they just can't believe it. She just pointed out, now the two eyes can see. So she was quite happy. She came with someone guiding her. Now she can go walking on her own without any support. 